Deuteronomy chapter 4 is the beginnings of the nation of Israel. And this is Moses giving instructions to the nation of Israel as they go in to possess the promised land. Deuteronomy chapter 4, I'll begin reading in verse 1. The Bible says, Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God, hath destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you, this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for the songs that have been sung to prepare the hearts for the message. Thank you, dear Lord, for the word of God that we have just read. And ask, sweet Holy Spirit of God, that you would take the truth and make it real in our hearts. Help there to be a holy hush amongst the people to be able to concentrate on the word of God. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and fill me with thy spirit. And help me to be able to preach and teach the word of God with truth, without heresy. And as your word goes forth, dear Lord, we ask that you would save a soul that's nearest hell and that you would strengthen a saint. And dear God, that you would help America. Please bless it and help it make it great again. Help us now, dear Lord. We are totally dependent upon you. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. In this particular portion of scripture, I'll draw your attention again to verses 7 and 8. This is Moses speaking to the people of Israel. It is the beginnings of the nation of Israel going into the land of promise and uh, He's giving them instructions that if they want to stay in the land and they want their nation to be strong and to be blessed of what they ought to do. Now this is given to the nation of Israel, but it is applicable to America today. And it shows you the heart and mind of God on the matter and God hasn't changed. In verse 7, the Bible says, For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh unto them? as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? In both of these verses, seven and eight, it talks about the nation being great, speaking about the nation of Israel, but America is great as well. And America is the, the greatest nation on the planet Earth. And uh, it was great, can be great again, and it's in trouble today. It's because uh, people have departed from God. But I want to utilize verses 7 and 8 where the Bible says about this nation that is so great because they have God and they have the commandments of God. And I want to uh, speak on this about doing your part to make America great again. You can do your part. You did your part this morning by being in the house of God. God takes note of that. And uh, you could look and say that it, it's over, it's going down, or you can do your part. You can stand your ground, and you can obey God. 
America was built on Christian doctrines. There's absolutely uh, no doubt about that. They don't necessarily teach that in school, but it is the truth from the Word of God. There are verses of uh, the Bible that populate most, most of the architecture there in Washington, D.C. And I understand that they are tearing down monuments across uh, the nation and so forth, but you would just about have to dismantle the architecture of Washington, D.C. to get rid of all the Bible verses that are embedded there uh, in Washington, D.C. But it has departed from its Christian roots. And uh, you, you can see that it's being propagated through the media and television and, and all of the movements. And so you would ask yourself, how did uh, this great nation <clears throat> get so far away from God? What would it take to get it back uh, to God and to have the smile and approval of God? And I would say that on an individual basis, uh, you as an individual and every church as an individual church can do their part to make America great again. I'll quickly get into the message uh, this morning of uh, what you can do to do your part and what we can do to do our part to make America great again. Number one, if you get this, it is number one, education versus indoctrination. Now consider it for just a moment. It is education versus indoctrination. In verses four through seven, the prophet Moses is speaking to the people about the Word of God. And uh, he says uh, about the matter of Baal Peor, which was a, a, a wicked event of God's people going over or after heathenism and idolatry and immorality. And God judged them uh, because of it. But uh, there was uh, individuals that stood for right, stood for God, stood for the Word of God, and God honored them. And uh, it, it shows you that God is not for the rampant immorality that America is going through today. He says, but ye that did cleave unto the Lord. You see, there were a part, a remnant that did their part. While all of the, the nation was being uh, infiltrated with immorality and the lusts of the flesh, lust of the eyes, the pride of life, and, and so forth. There was a remnant that cleaved into the Lord. So this is right and not participating in that. The Bible says of those uh, that are alive in one of you today, he says, Behold, I've taught you statutes and judgments. That's education. That's Bible education. He says, I've taught you statutes and judgments. He's speaking about the Word of God. Even as the Lord my God commanded me that you should do so in the land where you go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations or those that you mingle with this week. That by the grace of God you came to church to, to hear about Jesus, to sing songs of Zion, to open up the word of God and to study the word of God, and then you would um, uh, leave, leave church after the church service is over, and those that you intermingle with, they, they would understand that you have been with Jesus through the word of God. He says, which shall hear all these statutes. Somebody needs to hear about what you learned in the word of God through your personal Bible study this week. Somebody needs to hear that Jesus loves them. Somebody needs to hear that uh, you're going to church, you want to take somebody to church with you to open up the Word of God, to study the Word of God, and God's got something better for them. Uh, which shall hear of all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. That's education, not indoctrination. Education is based on the Word of God and the God of the Word. And the Bible says that you're going to be called a person of understanding. You're going to be called a wise individual if you'll study the Word of God, be involved in the Word of God, and, and get involved with the God of the Word. The Bible says, For what nation is so great who hath God so nigh unto them? Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. As the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon Him for. That means that you can pray to God. You have the word of God and, and you can pray to God. In verse 9, he says, only take heed to thyself. That, that, that's personal. It is for the nation. It is for this church. It's for this country. But it's for me and it is for you as an individual. Only take heed. 
If God could save every one of us today and He's doing it through the Word of God, you know this. Take heed to this to yourself. You're going to leave church today and you're going to be out amongst the world, the, the nations as it is described here, and amongst those that don't believe in God, those that don't believe in the Word of God, and those that mock God and, and mock America and, and, and doesn't have America in the best interest. But you are going to be a testimony in front of those people of the Word of God and the power of God and change their life as well. He says, only take heed to thyself. Keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen. Remore, a, a memorial day, remembering what God has done. A memorial day, remembering the God of the Bible. That God brought the, the Israelites out in a day, out of Egypt. He provided for them all along the way. He he brought them up to the Red Sea and they thought, now what are we going to do? And Moses, the leader, uh, he sees the, the enemy fastly approaching from behind and think it's over for you. And he sees the Red Sea in front of him. There's no place to go. And uh, the Lord says, uh, go forward. And he stretched out his staff and the, the waters of the Red Sea, they... They parted on both sides. And the Bible says they congealed or they stood still. They stood upright and God provided a way. You remember that God has provided a way. You remember when you got saved, when you got born again as a child of God. And God will provide a way. Amen. God's going to provide a way for you. Through the trials and through the troubles, if you would simply listen and hearken to the word of God, and the devil doesn't want you to do that. He says, take heed to yourself, keep, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, lest they depart from thy heart all the days of life. What says, teach them to thy sons and thy sons' sons. That's education instead of indoctrination. Teach the children about God and about the Word of God. Educate yourself on the Word of God and the, the God of the Word and that God will provide a way. And then teach those that are around you about God and the Word of God. You're, you're getting to be in the remnant. These are the last of the last days. You're intermingling with people at work, school, or play that I understand aren't in support of God. You are there as light. You are there to teach them about God and about the Word of God based on what you learn. I'm saying education versus indoctrination. When I speak about indoctrination, I'm speaking about that uh, this probably won't be taught in your local schools. In the local schools, it is taught about confusion. The Bible says God is not the author of confusion. 1 Corinthians 14, 33. I'm here to tell you today that evolution is confusion. Creation is Bible. In the beginning, God. And when the, the young child will receive that, the young child will believe that. But if the young child stands in front of somebody with authority and they are taught about evolution, they are confused. And they're taught that they have come from lower life forms up to and including uh, monkeys and apes and chimpanzees instead of created in the image of God. Evolution brings confusion. Creation brings a proper biblical education. Transgenderism is confusion. That children can determine their own sex based on personal identity choices is confusion. And transgenderism is being taught a lot of times without the parents even knowing it. And, and, and giving choices to individuals without some of the parents even knowing that. That is absolute heresy. It's absolute indoctrination. It's not education about where the child came from. The child was made in the image of God. You were made in the image of God. Public opinion is, is that you choose and the school board can choose over and above what the parents say. 
They confuse the child about where they came from, about how they got here, and so they don't believe anything about the Bible of where they're going to go. And they believe that when they wind up, they just die like a dog dies, and that's not Bible. They confuse the child, the boy, or the girl about feelings and basing themselves on their feelings. They listen to a few outspoken atheists and agnostics about what they think and about the rights of the people versus the heart and mind of God. What happens is, is it goes from confusion to a crisis. And the nation winds up departing from God. The nation winds up losing all common sense and sanity. The nation is losing its youth. And the nation is going under. In Romans and in chapter 1, the Bible says it would be that way. In Romans chapter 1 and beginning in verse 21, the Bible says, Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God. When they knew God, that's through proper biblical education. But then comes in indoctrination. They glorified Him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like the corruptible man, into birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. That simply means that they will uh, guard the eagle and the owl and uh, uh, kill the babies. That's what it means. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor themselves between their, their selves. Who changed the truth of God unto a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever. Amen. That, that's a nation in crises. Do you know that uh, in the beginnings of our educational process, that they used a, a, a primer book that uh, taught the kids about God. The whole ABCs were based on uh, Bible verses. And uh, you can look it up. But it, it just took a few atheists, just a few agnostics with a powerful voice to stop all of that. And so the young children that liked, your children like church, I'm going to tell you that. Little, little children like Sunday school. They, they like church. They like learning about God. They like learning about the Bible stories. But uh, enter in the devil. Enter in the agnostic. Enter in the, the atheist. And they, they knew about God, and now they depart from God. It becomes a nation that is in crises, followed up by catastrophe, where the Bible says in Romans 1, 26, for this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, watch it, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, malicious, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. That's why you have school shootings. Amen. Multiply, 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 multiply. One gets the limelight, another one's planning it. Why? Because God has been removed. There's a crisis in America. It is biblical education that the country needs to get back to. Amen. 
You need to educate the young people about God and that they are created in the image of God and that they are body, soul, and spirit. You need to educate the young people that uh, the Bible is the Word of God and that God loves them and Jesus died for them and that there is a devil that hates them. And both God and the devil have a plan for them. But that if they would yield to God, it would be the best life. If they yield to the world, the flesh, and the devil, it will be the death of their life. You need to educate. You need to educate yourself. You already know that. You need to take heed to that. What can I do? I can do my part to make America great again. Take heed. Education versus indoctrination. It's a catastrophe. Bible and prayer uh, left the school in 1963. Uh, that was the year that I was born. Roe versus Wade was legalized abortion in 1973. Same-sex marriage was passed nationwide in 2015. Now, before that, before that, before, uh, before, and, and I know that the church battled and had a small voice, and I, I know that they battled against same-sex marriage, but before then, you did not have as open as you have now little boys and little girls wanting to switch gender. You, you may have had transvestites, you may have seen some of this, but you didn't have it like you have it today. And it's because we backed up and given ground. And the devil's not going to stop. It's going to go on and on and on. What, what can you do? What can I do? Well, education versus indoctrination. School is more important than church today. Used to, church was important. It might have been because they didn't have TV. They didn't have much to do. I don't know, but they, they did uh, work all the time. Work, work is good, but work shouldn't supersede church. Sports is more important than church today. Amen. In fact, they schedule it on Sunday and Wednesday. That's right. uh, kick God out of the public arena. Separation of church and state. Take down the Ten Commandments. Throw the judge out. Now, no matter what your personal opinions are on those issues, and if I touched on a hot topic that you say... Uh, that, that's too rough for the pulpit. It's reality. It's reality in, in America. The Bible still says in Proverbs 14.34, Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Amen. The Bible still says in Psalm 9.17, The wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. You and I need to get back to educating ourselves on the Word of God. What does God say on the matter? You and I need to get back to educating the young children about God, about the Bible, about Christian American heritage, study it, where they came from, and how Christ loves them. What can you and I do? I said education versus indoctrination. Here's number two, and I'll hurry. Please take your Bible and go to Titus 3.5. Timothy, Titus 3.5. The schools are no longer simply educating the young children on reading, writing, and arithmetic. And uh, I was a public educator for 31 years. So I know, and I know about textbooks, and I know about curriculum, and I know what's in them, and I know that they're big money, big money. And so when you take a science book and you just start saying millions and billions of years ago, and you start showing a tadpole that becomes a chimpanzee and then becomes a grandpa, then that child starts believing that and then the child comes home and the parents say no you were created in the image of God and they think that the teacher's right and you're wrong 
because the teacher has been hired by the school board to be able to propagate these lies. And so now you have a country torn apart and the devil sitting back laughing. Do you think America is unified today? Help me out, okay? It's not. It was great. It's, it, it's, it's being torn apart. And so I said education versus indoctrination. You can do your part in that. I can do my part in that. We can each do it at work, school, or play. In Titus chapter 3 and in verse 5, it's not only in rebuilding America, making America great again, or the fact that I do my part and you do your part of education versus indoctrination. But in Titus 3 verse 5, I want you to consider this point, regeneration versus reformation. I'll explain that in a moment. But I want you to get the two words, regeneration versus reformation. In Titus chapter 3 and in verse 5, the Bible says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done. That is reformation. But according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. What can I do as far as my part in making America great again and having the smile and approval of God on my life and on my church and on America? It is regeneration versus reformation. What's it mean, preacher? It means that you allow the Holy Spirit of God to search your heart this morning and say, are you really saved? Are you truly born again? It's a new heart versus a new leaf. A new leaf is saying, well, you know what? I ought to go to church and I'll go to church. I'll go and I'll sit in and I'll turn over a new leaf. I know that the things that I've been involved with are not right. And I know that America's not going in the right path. And, and I'll go to church and I'll start being a pretty good person. That's called reformation. And that won't do any good. It, it, won't, uh, it won't help you as far as you won't go to heaven by being good. You'll go to heaven by being saved. Amen. You'll go to heaven by getting saved. Getting saved is regeneration. It's not about that you went to church and that you quit doing some things, though that's good. But the Bible clearly says here, now watch it again, not by works of righteousness which we have done. A work of righteousness is going to church. It is paying your bills. It is mowing your grass. It is paying your taxes and, and being a good citizen. It is going to church and those things. That, that's good. But it is a work of righteousness which will not save you. You have to be born again. Regeneration means that you have realized that you were born with a genetic makeup that means you are a sinner. You were born with the sin gene. It's in your genes. It's in your makeup. You have a sin in nature. And that's what Jesus died for. Jesus died to pay your sin debt. You have to realize that I am a sinner. I was born with a sin nature and now I sin willingly and willfully no matter if I try to cover it up or put some fig leaves on or hide amongst the trees. The Bible says you sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. You say, okay, preacher, uh, how do I know for sure that I am saved, born again? When Nicodemus came to Jesus by night, and he was a righteous man, but he wasn't a saved man, the Lord Jesus interrupted the conversation and said, you must be born again. You have to be saved. I want to ask you this morning, have you ever been born again? I know that you might be good people, working people. Praise God for that. I'm glad that you're in church. It's a wonderful thing. But have you been born again? How do I know, preacher? Was there a time 
when you admit it to God, I am a sinner. And Jesus died on the cross to pay my sin debt. And by childlike faith, right now, as humbly as I can, I ask Jesus to come into my heart and save me from my sins. Have you been religious in the past like a Nicodemus? Or have you been regenerated through the Holy Spirit of God? Regeneration versus reformation. If you're not saved, you need to get saved today. Here's my last point, and I'll be done. I said in doing your part to make America great again, it has to do with Bible education versus the indoctrination that you're getting over the airwaves. What they're telling you is okay and acceptable and right is not right. It's not right. They're making the child of God and the Bible the enemy. Uh, God's not your enemy. The Word of God is truth. And they're trying to propagate an indoctrination to make you think that it's okay to do what they're doing. It's not okay. God's still against it. And then number two is regeneration versus reformation. It means that there was a time when you got saved. And my heart's desire for you this morning is that if you're not saved, you would truly get born again, get saved today. That way that you can answer the question, do you know for sure if you die today, you'd go to heaven? And you can say yes, because the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you're trusting in Jesus. Here's last, go to Romans chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2. What can you do for America? What can I do for America? Education versus indoctrination. Regeneration versus reformation. Make sure I am a saved, born again child of God. And then number three and last is Romans 12, 1 and 2. What can I do for America to help make America great again? As a child of God, you look at transformation versus confirmation. Now watch this and we'll end. In Romans 12, 1 and 2, the Bible says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, here at this point in the message and here in this point in the Bible, he's speaking to Christians. This is speaking to Christians with the assumption now that uh, I have pleaded for you to get saved. Maybe you prayed that in your heart while I was preaching. Maybe you need to wait until the invitation. But what you need to do is respond when the Holy Spirit of God taps you on the shoulder and says, you've never done that. You're turning over a new leaf. You don't have a new heart yet. Don't walk out of the building. Get saved today. But this last point is for Christians, for children of God. He says in Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now watch here is our last point. And be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. This is transformation versus confirmation. You need to be transformed by the power of God, the power of a changed life to make a difference. In those around you, you say you're saved, born again, child of God, but if you leave here and you act like, look like, talk like, smell like the world, the flesh, and the devil, you won't make a difference. It's the power of a transformed life. To where they say, well, I, I know what they used to do, but they don't do that now. I know where they used to go, they don't go there now. I know what we used to participate in and how we used to talk and what we used to do. We don't do that now. All by the grace of God, the power of a changed life in Christ versus the pressures, the pressures to conform to this world. If you turn on the TVs, the media, the eloquent of speech, 
They're going to tell you that the times have changed. You need to get up with the times. And that people have a choice to do with themselves what they want. And that you need to go along with that. And you're going to go out and the media and the malls are going to tell you as a child of God how you ought to dress. They're going to tell you where that you ought to go. After all, you're saved by grace. You're under grace, not law. They're going to tell you it's okay to drink this, to do that, to go there and look like this. There is a pressure to conform to the world. Confirmation leads to the world controlling you. And then the world dictates to you. And then you, you have no power of God. Transformation leads to you changing the world around you. One person at a time. Somebody's going to notice they're different. Somebody's going to hear speech is not the same. The places are not the same. That's why the Apostle Paul under Holy Spirit of God leadership in Romans 12, 1 and 2, to you and I as Christians, says, I, 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 I beseech you, he says, it's a pleading term, I, I plead with you that you would present your body as a living sacrifice. You need to do it today, and you'll have to do it tomorrow. Holy unto God, acceptable unto God, reasonable service, and don't allow the world to conform you into its mold. The devil has a plan for you, child of God, but God does too. God has a wonderful plan for you. That if you would be transformed by the renewing of your mind, you can change the world around you one person at a time. You can make a difference in the heart and the life of a child, in the heart and the life of a co-worker, one at a time. America is different than it used to be. It does have all of the modern conveniences and technological advances, but it has departed from God. It's losing its power and protection of God. And you and I can do our part to make America great again. It has to do this morning with you allowing the Holy Spirit of God to speak to your heart, nudge you and say, repent of that sin. Turn back to God. Ask God to forgive, and He will certainly heal our land. With every head bowed and every eye closed, let me pose the question to you this morning. Do you know for sure that if you die today, you're going to heaven? The biblical answer for that would be, I have trusted Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, and Him and Him alone. If there's anything other than that, you need to come to an old-fashioned altar. We'll take the Bible and allow you to see from the Word of God how you can know for sure that you're going to heaven, that you're saved, born again, child of God. If you don't know, please settle it today. For every child of God, could you take a message like that and say, I want to do my part, and I'm going to be transformed through the Holy Spirit of God and not conforming to the world and the world's standards. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God, for this great nation. We thank you for those that have paid the ultimate sacrifice with their lives. Help us to honor them by turning back to you. Thank you, dear Lord, for salvation in Christ alone. We're praying that if somebody's here and not saved, they would get saved today. Praying for every child of God, that you would bless them, protect them, place a hedge of protection about them, allow them to understand the word of God was preached in a heart of love. Dear God, that you have the best plan and that you can restore America. And dear Lord, help us to be part of that. We ask it in Jesus' name and for his sake.